So let's do another one of these examples because sometimes you just need to see it more than once. In this case, I want to find the moment at O now. This is a different place. At O, due to the force acting from this top part down toward D. Now I've gotten rid of some of the components. I, in fact, I'm only going to have this force in 2D, which makes it a little bit easier to see how it's going to work. I'm going to have 5 in the I direction and 10 in the negative K direction. So all I have to do is sort of say 5I minus 10K and divide that by the square root of that. So here is my force. Now at O, and I put a purple string on here this time, this is your R vector. It goes from O to the point of application of the force. So at that point, your R, again, is fairly easy to write. It's just going to be 9.5J plus 10K. So when I have this, yes, of course, you could take the cross product. But we're getting really into an area where, in fact, it's just as easy to do the scalar method. So what does that look like? Here are my distances. Now I only have two distances this time. I have one in Y and I have one in Z. I only have two forces. I have one in X and one in Z. So what does that give me in terms of a moment? Well, if I list the same ones I had here before, I, the black ones are distances and the green ones are forces, you can see that I'm missing some of these. So each of these three are going to be zero, which leaves us just these three to figure out whether they're positives or negatives. So if you look at the first one, I have a distance in Y and a force in X. So that would be this. A distance in Y, put your palm along the distance, curl your fingers in the direction of the force. Now clearly my thumb is pointing in the negative Z direction. And at this point all I can do is multiply this one times that one times a negative one. And I'm going to get minus 4.25 FK. Now the second one, I have a distance in Y, same distance, and now a force in Z. So I'm over here. If I have my palm going out the Y direction, and my fingers curling in the direction of Z, you can see that my thumb is pointing now in the negative X direction. So that would be this one. Again, I've had minus 8.50i. Minus, minus. Down here, I have a distance in Z. My distance in Z goes down because I'm going along the force. Uh, excuse me. My distance in Z goes up this way. And my force is in the negative X direction. So here's my distance up and my force out, and that gives me a positive y. I mean, you can stop and think about this. How would this thing tip? Is it going to tip toward the camera or away from the camera? If you put this distance and you're holding it right here, if I hold this right here at O and I put this force on here, this is going to tip backwards, and that's a positive y. So when you can really master the scalar methods, in many times, it is just as fast to multiply these couple numbers and figure out whether they're positive or negative than to take a cross product and then have to figure out if they're positive or negative anyway to check your answer.